Welcome back, everyone. Kevin Carpenter here with Klaus Eagleberger. And, you know, I, I keep working on my pronunciation, so I hope I'm getting a little bit better. Um, welcome, Klaus. Welcome. Hi. So Klaus is a freelance trainer and consultant who literally trains all around the world uh, on site, which I think we all prefer in training, but he also does online trainings too. Um, he's the author of this wonderful book on software design, which a lot of his classes are about, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, you know, one of the organizers for the Munich C++ user group, and, you know, our back to basics and software design tracks here at CPPCon are, are with uh, Klaus's help as well. So mm -hmm. glad to have you. Welcome. Thank you for the invitation. So CPPCon, we're, I want to say, 21 days out, and so I have to ask first, do you have any particular speakers or talks that you're most looking forward to? Oh, definitely. Um, there's always a couple of speakers that I like, and I do like that Herb will be the first talk, if I, if, uh, if I remember this correctly. So usually you had one of the last keynotes. This year yeah. you will have the first one. That's a pretty good, good start. And this might yeah. indeed set the theme for the entire conference. It's interesting because, yes, this year he is the opening keynote, but in previous years, you know, Bjarne a lot of times mm -hmm. opens, but this time we have Herb opening instead of doing the closing. And mm -hmm. um, I think David is doing a closing keynote, which I know a lot of people are excited about because it's mm -hmm. supposed to be really covering the reflection and what's mm -hmm. going on in reflection in C++. Yeah, absolutely. A hot topic. <laughs> <laughs> Are you excited? So, you know, before we get on to your class, tell me, what are your thoughts on reflection? Because I'm curious. Oh, I'm pretty excited because this might be the one big thing, as Andrea Alexandrescu said a couple of years ago at Meeting C++, the one big feature that is missing from the language. I'm also a little worried, though, that after this has been introduced, everybody's like, now we do everything in uh, in reflection. Yeah, All the problems are solved with reflection. <laughs> and then we have overuse of reflection and we have to learn to unlearn a couple of things again uh, and to realize where it's good and where it's bad. Now, this is what I'm usually focusing on. Um, pros and cons. There's yeah. always both of them. It's funny because I haven't, you know, honestly, I have not been following the reflection that much. You know, many years ago, I used it some in C sharp, uh, you know, and I remember using it to solve a few problems, but it's been that long that now I'm, I don't know what I'm missing, you know? And so, um, I'll be excited to catch up on, cause I know we have a few talks this year on reflection. Okay. So is so there I'll, anything I'll... else you're looking forward to? Oh, what I'm definitely always looking forward to is to meet the people. Yeah, this yeah. is why I go to a conference, yeah, meeting the people in person, talking to them uh, in, in the various breaks. That's what I'm looking forward to, definitely. You know, that's um, I totally understand that because that was the part that, you know, I've said before when I've done some of these, I didn't meet as many people until I volunteered. And, you know, now mm -hmm. it's like, I just love going to the conferences, <laughs> catching up yeah. with people that I know and then meeting new people. And it was interesting because the other day we interviewed someone uh, at my work mm -hmm. who I'd actually met them at CPPCon in 2021. And so it was kind of one of those like, didn't we meet before? <laughs> and sure <laughs> enough. So hopefully they'll be joining our team, but we'll see what happens. Right. So today I want to talk about, you got a pre-class on C++ software design, your favorite topic. Absolutely. And one of my favorites, which I feel like is a constant learning experience for me. Um, I, you know, it's like, and just to say, if you don't have Klaus's book, you, you definitely want to get it. Um, it just seems like there's so much depth in software design that there's, I can see you, you've been teaching this for years, right? Absolutely. Yeah. It, it is one of my, perhaps even the most favorite topic nowadays, because I see that this is what, what the community needs most. Yeah. There are so many talks on features, so many books and, and references on how to use this feature, that feature, but there's very, very little on software design. And this is why I kind of stick to that topic. I think this is truly required. Um, well, but all, Sorry. No, go ahead. But I also like the, um, the fact that it's not as solid as features. In features, you can always say, this is the way we do it. This is how it works. In software design, it's always a little more soft. Uh, right. Yes, you can do it this way, but you can also consider the other approach. It gives you this and that ad uh, advantage, but then you might have the other disadvantage. That's what I like. 
Uh, trade-offs between pros and cons. So it seems to me, because at least in my own experience, <clears throat> I start to learn, you know, one or two patterns and, and then I can start seeing where they apply, mm -hmm. but then I might be working on some other project and I get away from it a little bit. And then I come back and revisit it. And it's one of those things where um, with experience, you then start seeing something anew, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. And so it's one of those items that, at least for me, I've had a hard time just like you're saying, it's like, it's easy to see that, you know, okay, well, we now have the, you know, the, the erase if, and you don't have to do the two part remove idiom when you're doing a delete on something in a, in a standard mm -hmm. library, you know, in a container where with design patterns, it's, you know, when do I use the visitor pattern? You know, uh, yeah. how do I apply these things when I'm writing my code? And, and then it's one thing I think to recognize the pattern when you see it, but then to conceptually be like, I'm going to use this pattern here because yeah. it's going to do this for me. That's exactly the two things that I'm trying to do in my class. So first showing which patterns exist, because without knowing them, you cannot really consciously use them. That's definitely the first step. But then being able to recognize them. And I show a lot of examples in even the C++ standard library where these patterns have been used. Sometimes in forms people don't expect. Yeah, sometimes, mm -hmm. so, so you mentioned the strategy pattern. Um, it's everywhere in the standard library, just not by means of a base class, but by means of template parameters. That's okay. the same idea, yep. but um, it, it's everywhere. And it's so useful. And yet sometimes it's not. And that's then uh, yeah, probably a third thing. Uh, knowing when not to use a pattern, knowing about the disadvantages and when another pattern uh, applies better. So, you know, I, I'm trying to think, I remember one of the, now I'm going to lose it because I don't remember the name of the pattern, but <laughs> last year, I want to say in one of the talks that I saw with you, we were talking about being able to, you know, watch how you're doing dependencies because you're using mm -hmm. different patterns to limit them. And it was interesting because I was talking with Phil that, you know, you know, Phil Nash does his test driven development. Yeah. And I try to do TDD, but there's many times I'm writing code that I'm writing the code first, then I do TDD. Then when I'm doing TDD, I see how tightly I coupled something. Mm -hmm. And so where I'm going with this is it feels to me like as I get better at my design patterns, I can work to apply that in, you know, as I'm engineering the software to to limit those kind of problems as well. Kind of like how TDD will help me keep from tightly coupling, understanding and putting my design patterns together will help me craft that better quality software too, right? Yeah, I, I definitely think so. Whereas my advice is not uh, to um, always apply the patterns first to decouple, but first keep things simple. And if you at some point, because you started to use TDD or, or whatever, um, if you at some point realize that something is tightly coupled, then you apply a design pattern. So simplicity first, and then if there's a problem, if a change is difficult, then you uh, you pick the right pattern. And that's then the art of yeah, picking the right one, knowing which kind of dependencies you have, separating the right way, and then if already used a pattern, you know, whether you know that it's a pattern or not. That's, okay, sorry, that's really cool. My head's just going, oh, I because I, you know, it's like, that's the part where it's just one of those things I haven't considered. And, and this is why people need to come see you for the training. I mean, aside from the fact that this is probably one of the most cost-effective ways Absolutely. to get in-person training. And we all did online stuff in, you know, 2020 and 2021. Yep. But I, I have to agree. There's, you know, being in, being in person for training just seems to be, um, I remember doing your class with you in 2019 and, hmm. you know, yep. to be in the room and having you walk around and then you're working with people next to you. Yeah. No, I was super happy that online trainings did work during the Corona period. Uh, without this, I would have been without work, kind of. Yes. Not, not quite, but still, almost. Um, but now I'm so happy that we can go back together into the same room and, yeah. and do on-site trainings. It's so more, much more effective indeed. Nobody is, okay, <laughs> I cannot say nobody. Dude. Few people are checking emails next to um, uh, listening to me. Right. But online trainings, uh, you're so easily distracted. And yeah. also online trainings are not as interactive. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're on site, if there's a question and suddenly there's even a discussion, uh, some per person asks, I give an answer, and some uh, other person extends the question. This rarely happens online. 
Yeah, people yeah. don't know each other. People often also don't see each other because many people don't activate the camera. And so it's not really interactive. It's me talking. There are a few questions. On site is better. It's yeah. the the thing you were saying about coming to the conference and just being able to meet the people. It's that same thing. Like, because yeah. when you're in that on site class, you're going out in breaks and talking to each other about the things you're experiencing. You know, we we have lunch up in the yeah. hospitality suite and you're hanging out at lunch and you have more questions that you can ask and answer. Yeah. And then since you've got a pre class, mm -hmm. then it's like you have all week long, you know, you'll have gotten to spend yeah. time with Klaus. And then as you're going to more talks throughout the conference, you can come find Klaus and be like, so when we were in class and we did this, what do you think about that? And it's just, yeah, it's yeah. that uh, that in-person part. I just, it's hard to replace. Absolutely. Yeah, I totally agree. So along the same lines of, you know, software design, you've got a talk you're going to do at CPPCon too, right? <laughs> same topic, but <laughs> slightly different. So I have now started a series of the common misconceptions of design patterns. And this year I've picked, so it's now the second iteration, two yep. of them. I saw um, that because you did the first one at N NDC Tech Town? Correct. And also yep. meeting C++. Last year, ah. unfortunately, because of the one talk rule, I could not do this at CPPCon. Ah, but this okay. year I focus on uh, software design again. And so I do the two of N. Nice. And I've picked uh, a couple of patterns. Probably I have to reduce this because it's probably too long. I'll practice <laughs> it eventually. But uh, one of my uh, major points will be CRTP. Mm -hmm. That is something that um, I found super, super fascinating in the last year. So a couple of years ago, Ben Dean gave this deducing this talk. Okay, yes, I remember. This, yeah, on the uh, explicit object parameters. And one of the things he showed is that... Um, you can use this to, well, replace CRTP. And then there was this uh, statement, and now I think CRTP is just going away, or similar. And I need a couple of people afterwards showed CRTP examples replaced with, um, with these explicit object parameters. And so often the examples were just plain wrong. Ah. Yeah, it did not compile. People yep. did not realize it in the talk. Yeah, so the speakers, I mean. Um, but afterwards, when we talked about this, all right, it doesn't work. And the reason is that there are actually two CRTPs mm -hmm. and that's easily confused. So if I say CRTP, you might have a different idea than what I, what I want to talk to you about. And so the term CRTP is overloaded. It yep. might actually uh, result in, in uh, a little bit of a confusion. And so that's pretty much what I'm, I'm trying to talk about. Now, terminology. Um, use the right terms to communicate the, the same thing. Uh, people should understand the thing that you have in mind. That's pretty much what design patterns are about too. I was going to say that's, yeah, that's the good part about when you talk about design patterns, when everybody understands what the same pattern is, it gives you a better way to communicate something in a very concise manner. Exactly. And, and I know that I was looking this morning on SCED and there's like 40 people already saying they're coming to your talk. So we better have a big enough room. <laughs> this sounds great. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy about this. Which also means that there's lots of people that need to learn about design patterns. So if you aren't already, go sign up for Klaus's class. It'll start on the 14th and the 15th, the, mm -hmm. the weekend before CPPCon. You can get in some great training and then enjoy the rest of the conference too. And otherwise, Klaus, I appreciate your time today and I look forward to seeing you in a few weeks in Aurora. Thank you very much for the invitation. See you too. Have a great weekend. You too.